Here I've got a nice integral from our favorite integral suggester. So our goal is to determine the integral from zero to one of the inverse hyperbolic tangent of x squared over x squared. And we're gonna immediately change the form of this to have to do with logarithms instead of this inverse hyperbolic tangent. But I think originally writing it like this is just a little bit prettier. And we're gonna use the following identity. So the inverse hyperbolic tangent, so I'm missing an h here, of x squared is equal to one half natural log of one plus x squared over one minus x squared. I've sketched the, the start of that here. So if u equals the arctan hyperbolic x squared, then hyperbolic tangent of u equals x squared, but the hyperbolic tangent of u is e to the two u minus one over e to the two u plus one. And so we have that equals x squared. And from here, we've got a rational function in the variable e to the two u, which can be easily solved for e to the two u, and then take the logarithm of both sides, and then you're pretty much home free. Okay, so that being said, let's get into this. So we're gonna rewrite this as one half. We have the integral from zero to one of this natural log of one plus x squared over one minus x squared, and then dx over x squared. Now we're gonna do a bit of a change of variables, and I've rewritten this as dx over x squared to motivate that change of variables. So let's maybe let y equal one over x. Let's notice that that means dy is equal to negative one over x squared. So that's good, and then when x is equal to one, that's the upper bound, then y is also equal to one, whereas when x approaches zero from above, which is what's happening at this lower bound, we see that y will approach positive infinity. So all of this sorts out what's happening with our variable, as well as the bounds of integration. And the last thing to sort out is exactly how this changes. And that's not too hard of a calculation either. So if y is one over x, that means x is the same thing as one over y. That means the natural log of one plus x squared is the same thing as the natural log of one plus one over y squared. And then likewise for the denominator, we have one minus one over y squared. Now from here, we can multiply the numerator and the denominator inside this log with y squared, leaving us with y squared plus one over y squared minus one. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. We'll have a one half, and then we have the integral from one up to infinity. You might notice I changed the bounds of integration, but I'll do that by gobbling this minus sign up. And I realized we forgot a dx here. Okay. Then we'll have this guy right here. So we've got the natural log of y squared plus one over y squared minus one dy. So we've constructed an integral that's a little bit easier to work with. I'm gonna rewrite it a little bit more in order to motivate our major trick here, which will be to use Feynman's integration technique. So this is gonna be the same thing as one half. We have the integral from one up to infinity of the natural log of, I'm gonna write this as y squared minus one plus maybe z over y squared minus one, and then dy where we've evaluated this at z equals two. So notice evaluating that at z equals two gets this exactly. Now I'm gonna rename all of this f of z. So really we have this is equal to f of two, where f of z is equal to half, and then we've got this integral from one up to infinity of the natural log of y squared minus one plus z over y squared minus one dy. Okay, so that's good. Now we just have to determine what this function f is, which is how we'll finish this off. On the last board, we transformed our goal integral into the evaluation of a function at the number two, where f of z was equal to half the integral from one to infinity of this function having to do with z and y, but the y gets integrated out. 
Now we're going to take the derivative of this and see if we can set up a differential equation involving this function. Okay, so let's see. The derivative of this with respect to z, I'll call that f prime of z. That'll be equal to 1 half, and then I'll have my integral from 1 to infinity. Now I need to take the derivative of this with respect to z. And I'll let you guys do that on your own. It's a standard application of the chain rule. But what we end up with is 1 over y squared plus z minus 1, and then we'll have dy. And now we've got an integral which we can evaluate. So maybe I'll factor a z minus 1 out of this denominator. So that'll leave us with something like this. We have 1 over 2 times z minus 1, and then the integral from 1 up to infinity of 1 over, so I'll write this as y over the square root of z minus 1 quantity squared plus 1 dy. Now I'll do a u substitution here. So my u will be equal to, let's see, y over the square root of z minus 1, so something like that. Notice that tells me that my du is equal to dy over the square root of z minus 1. In other words, dy is equal to, let's see, the square root of z minus 1 du. So that's going to set up our change of variables. So again, that means we're going to replace this dy with the square root of z minus 1 times du. Now let's see what happens to the bounds of integration. So if y is equal to infinity, well really y is approaching infinity, then u is also approaching infinity. So let's rewrite that. So as y approaches infinity, then u is also approaching infinity. And then as y approaches 1, u will be approaching 1 over the square root of z minus 1. Okay, so let's rewrite this integral using these substitutions. So let's see, we'll have 1 over 2 times the square root of z minus 1. We have a square root of z minus 1 here and a z minus 1 in the denominator, so that's how those simplify. And then we'll have the integral from 1 over the square root of z minus 1 all the way up to infinity of 1 over u squared plus 1 du. And now this lower bound of integration is kind of gnarly to me, so we're actually going to do another substitution to see if we can clear that up. So I'll erase this yellow in order to do that. Now we're going to piggyback another substitution into this, which will provide a little bit more simplification. And the substitution there will be u equals 1 over v, which is the same thing as v equals 1 over u. Okay, so let's see. That means that du is equal to minus 1 over v squared. And then furthermore, as u approaches positive infinity, v will approach 0 from above. So that's good to see. And then when u equals 1 over the square root of z minus 1, we have v is just equal to the square root of z minus 1. So we've lifted that square root of z minus 1 from the denominator to the numerator. That just makes this a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so let's see what we're left with. We have 1 over 2 times the square root of z minus 1. That stays out front. Then we'll use this minus sign to change the order of the bounds of integration just like we did before. So we'll have 0 up to radical z minus 1. And then let's see. Our du will involve a 1 over v squared. So we've got a 1 over v squared dv here. And then my u squared will also be 1 over v squared. So I've got 1 over 1 over v squared plus 1. So something like that. But now let's notice that I can take this v squared here, multiply it into the denominator, and that leaves me with something that's pretty nice, and that is 1 over v squared plus 1. And the antiderivative of that will be the inverse tangent, which we evaluate at these two endpoints. 
Notice evaluating at this endpoint will give us zero. Evaluating at that endpoint will give us the square root of z minus one. So here we have one over two root z minus one arc tan of the square root of z minus one. And so that's the derivative of our function f. So let's bring that up and then we can move on to the next step. So we just formed a differential equation for our function f. We have that it's one over two times the square root of z minus one arc tan square root of z minus one. Now we'll take the antiderivative of both sides here with respect to z. So that'll give me f of z equals, I'll write this as just one half, and then I have my antiderivative of arctan of the square root of z minus one over the square root of z minus one dz. And let's remember we'll have a constant related to this integration as well. So we'll have to sort that out later. So now we can sort this out again with another substitution. So our substitution here will be u equals the square root of z minus one. That means du is equal to dz over two times the square root of z minus one, just by standard power rules. So that means here we have the integral of the arctan of u du plus a constant. But now we can approach that with integration by parts. Maybe I'll leave that as a little bit of a homework exercise. But what that leaves us with is u times arctan of u, and then it'll be minus one half times the natural log of u squared plus one, and then we have plus this constant. Now we have to substitute back in for our original variable, and that's going to give us something like the square root of z minus one, and then arctan of the square root of z minus one minus one half. Well, that's just gonna be the natural log of z when all is said and done. So the natural log of z plus our constant. Okay, so that's our value for f. Now we have to figure out what that constant is. But let's notice if we evaluate this at z equals one, this bit disappears and this bit disappears because the natural log of one is zero and arctan of zero is zero. So that means that this number right here, this plus c indeed must be equal to this function evaluated at one. Okay, so let's summarize that data and then we're ready to finish it off. So we've put a lot of work into this, but we're almost done. We found that our goal integral is equal to a function which we called f evaluated at two, where we determined that this function was equal to z minus one arctan z minus one minus half natural log of z plus f of one. That was the undetermined value at this point. And f of one can be calculated using the original integral version of our function. So that's half the integral from one to infinity of natural log of y squared over y squared minus one dy. Okay, now we're ready to get to it. So that means this thing is equal to just plugging in z equals two into this. We get one arctan of one, but arctan of one is pi over four. So that's gonna be pi over four minus one half natural log of one half natural log of two. So I'll write that as the natural log of two over two and then plus f of one, but that's this uh, integral right here. So we've got the integral times a half of one to infinity of the natural log of now we've got y squared over y squared minus one dy. And we'll do this with integration by parts. So let's sketch out the steps a little bit. So let's let u equal to our function. So that'll be the natural log of y squared over y squared minus one. That means du will be equal to the reciprocal of this y squared minus one over y squared times the derivative of the inside. I'll just write that as d by dy of y squared over y squared minus one, and then we have dy at the end. Now I'll let you guys take this derivative and combine it with what we have, but I'll just say that it's equal to negative two over y squared minus one dy. Then if we have dv equal dy, 
which is what's left over after choosing this u, we see that v is equal to y. Okay, so now we're deep into this problem. So I'll skip a couple steps. I'll let you guys fill them in, but what you'll end up with is something like this. So this will be pi over four minus the natural log of two over two. And then we'll have plus one half times the limit as y goes to infinity. So that comes from this upper bound of integration of y times the natural log of y squared over y squared minus one. And then finally, plus one half the integral from one up to infinity of one over y plus one minus one over y minus one dy. Okay, so that comes from this integration by parts. This is the like u times v portion, and this would be the v du, where we've done like some sort of partial fraction decomposition on this term. Okay, so in the end, we just need to determine what all of the rest of this is equal to, and it's in fact equal to the natural log of two. So when we combine that with what we have, we see that we have pi over four plus the natural log of two over two. So that's the value of our goal up here, and that's a good place to stop.